This is not, this is not good, guys. This is not what normal spacecraft are supposed to be doing. What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Kerbal Space Program. I wasn't really too sure about where I wanted to go with Kerbal or how I wanted to do it. I didn't really like playing in sandbox mode. I, I really wanted to have some sort of a challenge and something that really drives the uh, the episodes forward. So I decided, it was actually my brother who gave me this idea and I decided to start up career mode. Now in career mode, obviously the space center is very dull um, and you have to do some basic missions. So we have to so we have some objectives here So what are the objectives on the mission? So we got gather scientific data from Kerbin Okay, simple enough and launch our first vessel. We have literally no parts. We're gonna call this the mark one We're literally just gonna name them all in perfect order So eventually we'll get up to like mark 500 and it'll be awesome to look back at all the first rockets So anyways, let's let's launch this thing all right, so we've got to gather scientific data from Kerbin. So this is awesome. This launch pad needs some upgrading. All right, so we're gonna do an EVA here. We're gonna just do an EVA report. Perfect, exactly. Get back on board there. All right, now we're gonna go stability control and... How high is this gonna go? Is this, what's the, 15,000 meters. Wow, that's an impressive rocket. All right, would parachute deploy, uh, we'll deploy you at an altitude of 700, maybe less, you know, 500, screw it. Live, live dangerously. You're gonna end up in the drink anyways, so we'll just speed up time here. No big deal, no big deal. And hit the parachute. Parachute hasn't deployed. Why isn't the parachute deploying? Well, there it goes. All right, we're gonna do a crew report. Another science points, and now we're gonna launch, and that way. It's like a missile. It's like being on board a missile. Perfect. Now that accomplishes both the launch our first vessel, and as soon as we recover this vessel, we should get the scientific data. Why is that parachute not working? And now we will launch the rocket, and we're gonna try and not die here. Launch at a bit of an angle there. Perfect. Yeah, the first couple missions are really simple. You don't really do much. I mean, you just launched, you have really no parts to play with yet. So perfect. We got some science points, 20 science earned. We got some money back, perfect. And you're alive with some reputation, and we finished both contracts, excellent. So you can see there a lot more contracts open up. First, we're gonna need to research some basic rocketry parts. Check. Gonna need, that would be nice. Basic decoupling stuff. We need more science. All right, so let's go into the vehicle assembly building here. We're gonna start working on the uh, Mark II here. So let's just delete the entire Mark I, perfect. All right, command pod. Can we do any science stuff? Oh, we've got goo containers. I feel like these are just gonna burn off in the atmosphere, but we're gonna try them anyways, cause yeah, I mean, there's atmospheric physics and stuff, but I, I feel like these will do okay. They'll, they'll work. And we'll bring along three temperature gauges as well. So everywhere we do the goo experiment, we will also get the temperature and that'll just hopefully bring back a buttload of science points. Perfect. All right, this thing looks ridiculous. All right, we're ready for launch. So it's gonna be solid fuels, then drop the solid fuels, use the liquid fuel, and hopefully boost our way all the way up into orbit. And into, well, obviously, if we escape the atmosphere. Atmosphere is at 70,000 meters, I believe, so we've really gotta push it. This should, this should do it, no problem. Here in the uh, Khan Industries space program, we have all the latest rocket technology, as you can see. Strapping 20 fuel tanks together instead of making one fuel tank. All right, well, let's do a goo experiment here Look at that seven science points perfect and then log the temperature perfect and then break that off I don't know if we're gonna have enough to get into orbit here like to get a good orbit I'm pretty sure it's something around 2,000 meters per second there. You can see at the bottom on the gimbal here um, And we're like already half burnt the fuel uh, we're burning up on exit. That's not good. That's that's a that's a big drag waster. 
This is not, this is not good, guys. This is not what normal spacecraft are supposed to be doing. Normal spacecraft definitely do not burn up while leaving the atmosphere. Once again, why you should never accept a job from a space program that has a starting capital of $25,000. All right, now we need to push this thing into orbit and hopefully have enough fuel to then push it out of orbit. So we really have to ride that fine line of orbit, which I don't think it's gonna even have enough to do that. All right, that's the smallest orbit. Does it? Doesn't count. Does that count? Yes! Now we have to somehow use the last of the fuel and hopefully slow down enough to get back to the planet. I, I honestly think we, we might be screwed here, guys. I think this, this might be a lost cause and we might be stuck in space forever. And we'll have to come rescue Jebediah another day. Oh, did it work? It worked! Perfect. All right, Jebediah. We are coming in at a really, really shallow angle, though. Which means we're going to be in atmosphere for a long time. Which means we're going to burn up a lot. Oh, goodness. Oh, God. Oh, see how hot this is? That's not good. That's not good. This is apparently cold for some reason. The engine's acting like a really good heat shield, but... Uh, all this stuff here is really a problem. Is this... Can I log you? No, you're already logged. You're already logged. Let's do one while burning up in atmosphere. That's got to give us some science points. Perfect. Temperature. Everybody wants to know the temperature. You can see we're shedding some serious speed now, though. As we drop into the thicker atmosphere. And we survived. Currently, the space program sucks. And it needs a lot of research points. And hopefully, this will do that. All right, nice. Plus 64 science earned, 107 science total. That's awesome. Just science data everywhere. All that mystery goo out in space. Look at that. That's, that is a good mission right there. $409,000. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to upgrade the launch pad. Because as you can see there, we're limited to 18 tons and we need bigger vehicles. So 140 tons, 100, 140 tons, boom, we've got a bigger launch pad. Perfect. All right, so definitely need that. Let's go to the research and development. Uh, stability, absolutely. You know what? Let's get aviation, 45 points. I really like aerodynamics, so I think let's, you know what? Let's just build a plane. Research some rocketry again, and then research some more survivability. Perfect. So we're set up more into this tier two here. All right, so let's go. You know what? Let's build a plane. All right, so Mark One cockpit, that, first of all, looks way better. Um, not very useful for spacecraft. I don't, there's a hole here on the side. All right, so we're going to put liquid fuel here on the back now. This doesn't actually have, we're not going to have an engine on there, so we're just going to leave that empty. It'll just be for structure, really. I don't think I have, no, we don't have anything structural unlocked yet. So we've got that. Now for engines, we're going to use the mini liquid fuel, just like this. Perfect. And like that. And we're going to mirror this, like so. Then we're going to do another one. And the one thing I really like about this, the game Kerbal is the building system is not really hard to pick up on. It's very easy to use and uh, it allows for some overlap between parts, which really allows you to not like it's not it doesn't have very strict rules on parts overlapping. You can do some more advanced stuff than what I'm doing now, um, but you, you can do some cool stuff and it's got a lot of like cool parts now like they have cargo bays now and a lot of parts came from mods. So there's a even if you don't like all the stuff that's in the game, there is a lot of mod support for it and you can definitely go and explore the modded option. Now, I'm I'm more of a vanilla player, especially when it comes to Kerbal, but uh, mods are always an option. So we're gonna put some tail fins on this thing. It's gonna be like a, like a flying fish, almost. Some swept wings. Definitely like a flying fish. This looks nice. All right, where's the center of mass? The center of mass is in front. So that's very important when you're building a plane. You want your center of mass, obviously, in between your sets of wheels. Your center mass is back here and your plane will fall over so you want to make sure you have that and then uh, you want to have it relatively close to the wheels because when you're trying to lift off these wheels will act as a pivot point about that center of mass so you just kind of want to maintain that and then we'll have this really dorky front gear normally when you're building a plane you kind of look at these things here and you look at this and you go okay here's my center of lift and here's my center of mass and here's my center of thrust and 
you're trying to you kind of try and find a good balance that allows your plane to lift off and actually fly but generally speaking thrust if you think about it you're going to be lifting up from the center of lift and thrust is going to be pushing you forward so you kind of have to think of it like um, a pendulum almost if you had like a string and you were pushing on a string so if you hang your string from where the lift point is and then you push on it from where the thrust point is and you have a weight there is the weight going to stay up or not so in this case this one um we'll just fire it up four engines there i really like the four engines but the center of lift is behind it but because the thrust is pushing it forward the nose wants to get lifted up by the thrust and that's why this thing will actually fly relatively stable we can just pull up there perfect doesn't climb very fast but it's it's definitely speedy enough all right how fast can we go here but anyways guys i hope you guys do like this video um i really love this game and you can see i love the way first person mode looks all the switches and stuff and you can see there the throttle controls actually do things the gimbals all the consoles are live it's really just an amazing game and i hope you guys like it too and if you do want me to keep playing career mode then make sure you hit that up obviously uh, I promise you the next mission is going to the moon. You can see way up there. Oh goodness, I can't fly in first person to save my life. But you can see that the next mission is actually going to be going to the moon, and I'm really, really excited about that. We're going to be building a much larger rocket. So if you guys like this video, make sure you hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and uh, give some love for Kerbal, because I absolutely love this game, and I would love to turn career mode into a series and really go through um, all the adventures. But anyways, make sure you hit that like button down below and hit that subscribe button and uh, show some love for Kerbal. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see y'all next time. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna zoom in here. Gotta come in for a landing. Oh God, oh God, this thing is so twitchy. Remove the twitch. Oh God, that was a bad, oh God, oh God, oh.